poem is called Godspeed. Godspeed. It's a word I heard in the James Bond movie. I thought it meant moving real fast in a desperate situation. Hoping that God had your back. And for some quite, quite some time, I've been living my life just like that. Trying to change, spruce up and fix up. Sometimes just tear up. And then only to have to build it back up. Hurrying and going my way. Going my way to make life make sense. And then using God as an alibi to save me from my own nonsense. Most of my years I had good intentions. Good ideas, even dreams, and a plan, or even an evil scheme to get there. But my timetable is slower or faster than the man upstairs, taking me too long to get there, which means I miss whatever my goals were, or maybe I'm going too fast, which means I'm really going nowhere. So I poke out my lips, put my hands on my hips, saying God ain't there. But he is, especially in times of need. I just need to move at his pace. God's speed. Cruise control. Not too fast and not too slow. And when you reach that goal in your heart, you will know. I don't think it's a mad rush or a laid back chill. It's more about prayer and following God's will. It's ups and downs. Passing and failing, chipping away every day, and not worrying about what people have to say, but what your God said. See, God is what you need to achieve to get up to His speed, or to slow down to His speed. It's what you need to overcome the obstacles you may be facing. Just move at His pace. God's speed is just what you need. Finding it can be a task. But once you do it, it will last. God in you forever, and it never ends. And to you, Godspeed, my friend. said. This poem is dedicated to my dad and the things that he said, and how he poured courage in my heart and wisdom in my head. Damn, here he comes, my personal bully, and dad said that I can't run. At that time, I was a straight-up eight-year-old nerd, and little Larry was mean, and he used curse words, some so terrible that I've never heard. Besides, he was only nine and he smoked cigarettes and drank wine. As he came bopping and sauntering up, balling up his fist and talking trash, I would grit my teeth and clench my fist, but he would still whoop my ass. And his reason was that he didn't like the clothes I had, my good grades, or jealous of my new basketball, or on a good day, for nothing. No reason at all. My dad said that he did it because he could. 
And as long as he knew that, he always would. It was up to me to get up. To get up and stand up. Stand up for my rights. But no offense, Bob Marley. I didn't know how to fight. So it continued and made my mom sad and my pop sick. Until one day he said, boy, damn it, pick up a stick. So I got my stick to get even that day. But he whooped my ass anyway. He started picking on the whole neighborhood and even some of my friends. His evil reign had no end. Until dad got us together and said, y'all ought to gang up on him and he'll soon be gone forever. So we got together with an elaborate plan and he whooped our behinds, man to man. Mama said I should try and talk things out. Maybe that's what this whole thing was about. So the next day he came with his medicine walk, hit me in the head and said that bullies don't talk. I asked dad about taking another way home, then maybe this joker would leave me alone. He said that for a coward, that's just fine, but not for no child of mine. Saying the tough get going or the going get tough or some shit that he thought would stick. But hell, it wasn't his ass getting kicked. Will Smith was right, man. Parents just don't understand. That following day, he blackened my eye. And the shit wasn't funny. Because this time, he wanted my money. My allowance, change I had saved. Working hard like a juvenile slave. That was it. He wasn't getting one more dime. So I asked my dad what to do one more time. He said, son, bullies come in all different shapes and all different sizes. Hell, they sneak up on you in evil disguises. They want to mess with your ass over and over and again and again. And he was sorry to say that most times they're going to win. You see, it's an evil version of life, song, and dance. But there is one way that you might have a chance. And that's to throw up your hands and stand like a man and fight that bully any way that you can. But most of all, he said, don't quit, don't give in. Son, one, then one day, you're sure to win. Well, that shit was deep, way over my head, but straight to my heart. And I made up my mind to tear that bully apart. So the next day on that walk home that I usually feared and hated, I hurried to our battleground and I waited. I was there first, letting him know that I was ready to go. He approached with surprise in his eyes and a smile on his face. Now I know you want to hear that I kicked his ass all over the place. Not necessarily, but we fought all that day and straight till night. If we were scoring points, I probably would have lost the fight. But in this war, protecting oneself and gaining respect, I think I put his little evil ass in check. Soon my walks became trouble free. The bully didn't want to be haggling with me. He knew that I was different. I had toughness in my heart and courage in my head. And all because of some stuff my father said. Things that I didn't understand. would better me. In life there are many bullies up ahead, but I'll be ready because of what my father said.
Thank you.